Hello, folks. So with the moon out there at 93%, I'm going to go for another HA target while I, I, I wait for the moon to be gone so I can resume my sombrero galaxy. I can't wait to finish that one. But uh, the narrowband target I found was the Owl Nebula. It's kind of small on my scope, but uh, it can be seen, and it's pretty bright with a single HA frame. Uh, you can already see the eyes here. And I did this target last year, but there, there's also a, a, a dark ring around it that I didn't really pick up last year. I'm going to see if I can do that this time, and maybe I'll combine this with last year's data, which should be pretty easy um, because it's the same scope, uh, same HOTEC, the, you know, the focal length is the same, same filter. As long as I, I've saved last year's calibration frames, I, I should be okay. And um, right now, the mean readout for HA is, this is what I'm talking about, 629 for a, a four-minute exposure. That is the lowest I have seen it in months. That means right now, um, there is, I just got another frame, it went, okay, 630, still hanging in there. The moon at 93% hasn't risen above the horizon yet. I think that helps a lot, but it's, it's going to rise any moment. There's no haze out there. My next door neighbor has turned her light off. Actually, ever since I asked her to turn the light off about a week ago, she, she's kept it off. So I, I hope that stays this you know, I hope that stays like it is. So that was really nice. And uh, so that's that's about as low as I, I can really get HA. It's just a, a perfect night, at least until the moon rises. And let, let's see. Um, I'm at Unity Game 139.21. Um, HA, four-minute exposure. Uh, I'm probably just going to stay on HA the whole night. You know, I was capturing HA on a galaxy the other night when the moon was bright. Yeah, it's kind of boring, you know. It's 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 good to do because it helps you pull out nebulas and distant galaxies, but it's just kind of boring because you don't see a lot of data coming through. <laughs> but I I am going to stick with that. I, I do want to do that. Um, let's take a look at my guiding. Oh, I just did a dither there. Let's see here. Let me clear it out. I'm pointing north, so my guiding should be better. Um, let's take a look. But it is gusty out there. 0 0.49, 0 0.54. Yeah, um, pointing north usually uh, gives me better guiding. 0 0.52, 0 0.49. Yeah, if it stays in there, I'll be happy. Um, you guys normally don't see me getting guiding like this. Um, normally I'm pointing in a different direction and guiding isn't great, but I'll take this. So uh, that's all I've got to say, and um, we'll see how this goes. I'll see you later. Okay, I am done capturing data on the OWL. I captured six more hours while the moon was bright, and this goes along with the ten hours I already had on it last year. And let's take a look at uh, uh, some comparisons here. So this is five hours of data I captured in HA on the OWL last year. And after I added four more hours to it for a total of nine hours between this year and last year, this is what it looks like. And um, uh, uh, it's, it's not a total fair comparison because I've already run a DBE and histogram on the left here where this is just a, a stack and no other processing. And one more thing about the one on the left is I drizzled it. I tend to do drizzling. I've used it in the past when um, the objects are small because I think if I drizzle it, you know, drizzling is really good when you're dealing with undersampled stars, but if you're also capturing objects that are small, it, it will kind of it will get you in closer, I think, on the object without a loss of quality. Because look at these pictures. Um, they're both at a one-sixth ratio. And look at how much bigger the owl is. And I don't think I lost any quality in the owl by increasing, uh, by by going to a, a higher resolution through drizzling. So you can, it's just a big difference here in the size. Well, let me bring this up now so we can get a better look at the owl. 
okay, is that, uh, yeah. See, this is a one-to-one -one ratio, and I'm still only at half the resolution on the left. But you can see, so this is five hours on the right and nine hours on the left. And, you know, there's not a lot of more detail to be had in the owl. Maybe it's a tiny bit fuller, a little bit brighter. But I, Jason refers to this as you, you, at some point you're going to get to a point of diminishing returns where, you know, if you stay on an object, you're, you're just not going to get anything more on it. And I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think this is what happened with me on the owl. Adding four more hours to the five hours that I already had here on the right didn't really seem to make that big of a difference. But it is what it is. So I'm glad I did something while the moon was bright anyway. So that's how the HA looks. And it's pretty much the same story with the oxygen, but we'll look at it anyway here. <clears throat> That's the one on the left, a one sixth ratio. And, and the one on the, the, the I mean, this is the one on the right. <laughs> My other left. I can't believe I said that. Um, uh, and you can see, uh, again, the drizzling really brings the owl closer in. And then the one on the left has a DBE. But this is the same thing. Um... Now you can see there is the slightest bit of a ring around the the nebula, but you know what? I lost it in when I processed it further. I you know what? I I wasn't going to worry that much about it. Oh well, it is what it is. Um, I still like how the owl came out, but I didn't really pick up that faint ring. Um, if I had really taken my time, maybe I could have done something, but it's just it's just too faint. Um, so that's how that looks. Now, if you saw me um, when I made that Medusa video, when I combined the data, I was surprised that the combine came out exactly what I had expected. But that's that's almost never the case. It's usually the, the combine is going to look something like, like that. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened here. Why did it come out so red? Was the HA just completely overpowering? Um, this is an... HOO image where I put HA in red and I put oxygen in green and blue and I used HA as luminance and uh, so this just doesn't seem well balanced here at all. I, I think uh, the I, like I said I think the HA is, is coming out too strong and let's take a look at my data again. Now I tried to do like if you saw on the, the monkey head where I did a linear fit it really um, evened out the three filters, but linear fit was not working on this. It was giving me really strange results, so I, I went without it. Now, I probably could have done some other trick on the on either HA or oxygen to try and get them the same tone or the same brightness, but they do look very different here. But anyway, I, I didn't worry too much about it. I thought, well, it is what it is. I'll just run a DVE on the combine, which I don't normally do. But this time I did, and it got me to more, this is really what what I would have expected. So that's that. Yeah, normally I don't run a, a background extraction on a narrow band after the combine, um, at least not lately. So uh, it, it, it's for just a small little circle, you, you would be surprised how many freaking versions I went through before I got something I liked. So let, let's take a look uh, at uh, some of the versions I went through. I, I barely did any sharpening. I, I did some denoise, of course, but there's just not, a, not enough going on here for me to try and sharpen without ruining it. So let me, let me show you the versions here. Okay, so this is my first attempt at processing. It's I knew this one was going to need more work, but I'm getting there. Okay, now this is very close to I, me thinking, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm almost I'm getting close to finish here. Okay, I brought it back a little bit because I thought I was too close in the other time. This one I really liked, but um, I still kept going. Mm, let me go back. I don't know why I went from this one to this one because I like this one better. But this one did come after I, I numbered them in sequence here. Okay, so 
Now I, I here's another one. Now I, I'm getting back to something I like again. <laughs> and this is my seventh crack at it. And now I almost quit here. I, I call this owl number one. I, I, this is something I really like, but you know, you a little too much time on your hands, you start tinkering a little bit. So here's the next version. Okay, so I just changed the core, the color in the center a little bit. I did kind of like this one better, but I kept tinkering. I dug in a little more. I wanted to, I didn't think there was enough definition with this big giant circle. The whole owl is just one big ball. And so I wanted to carve a little bit out. So I've got that. And I darkened the background. This is my final version. I darkened the background. I made the owl a little bit brighter. I'm not sure. That was the, this is the runner up. And this is my final. What do you guys think? I think I am going to go with this one. Um, unless I change my mind again, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to call it quits. And let me show you my, um, what my owl looked like last year. So here's how my owl looked last year. Um, and let's compare it to what I've got this year. Um, <laughs> what do you guys think? I kind of like the new one, but I don't think it's really a result of just more data. I think it's maybe it's a result that I can just process it a little bit better now. But, or maybe some of you guys actually like the one on the right. I never seem to I never seem to be able to predict what you guys prefer. Um, the eyes are more defined here. Maybe I gouged them out a little bit more here in my processing. Um, I know you guys are getting out. You can say, "Well, I kind of like the one on the right, the older one." That, that happens to me every time, but that's okay. You know, everyone's got their opinion. And uh, this star, <laughs> I called it a pulsating variable star. I don't really know if that's true. I I thought I read somewhere that it's a variable star, and that's why. I was getting these spikes. I even uh, sent this picture to NASA APOD with this title, Owl Nebula and Pulsating Variable Star. I wanted to see if they would react to it. And they did. And they kind of just said, eh, that probably has nothing to do with the star. It's probably um, an obstruction or something or a glare causing that. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> oh, well, but you know what? They responded. I got the NASA APOD guys to respond. How do you like that? So, and let me show you while I'm here one more thing, or two more things. There was a rare solar. Hey, there's Doug. He just posted something in Facebook. I hate these messages. I got to turn them off. <laughs> I'm going to tell him he's going to be in my latest video now. But there was a solar storm going on. Um, over the weekend, and uh, it even caused northern lights to be, at least they were supposed to be visible in Canada and the U.S., and it's because of this solar storm that was going on, and I finally caught something interesting with my new AR scope, my AR-102 scope, so that's that's really the first kind of cool image I captured with it, so I was happy to see that, and I captured, I pointed my telescope at this spot for about an hour, <clears throat> and I captured this animation. Now, seeing was bad, and I don't even know how this is going to look while you're seeing it here. So, I had too many blurry frames. I already removed a lot of them, but there were just other ones. The seeing conditions were just coming in and out. So, but I thought this was super cool. If only I could have had every frame in focus, it would have been great. So, anyway, I, I, that's a one hour animation with about 77 frames all strung together. Uh oh I better get out of here before Doug starts posting a bunch of stuff here. All right, um, that's all I got, folks. I will see you later.